specs wise, this guitar has got some great stuff going on. I'm going to investigate before I make a, a statement. It's got a rosewood fingerboard. You know, some of you guys out there are going to be very impressed with that. I am going to declare that it's a one piece net. opened up this massive tonewood rabbit hole um, and, and it's going to be a perilous journey. I hopefully at some point will emerge uh, blinky eyed, educated. Or you may never see me again. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the Guitaristas, and yes, you're very welcome. Good to see you. So today, another affordable guitar here. Today, it's, um, it's another one from the vintage brand. This is the V100 MR uh, Distressed Lemon Drop, okay? And as you might be able to tell from the, the flipped pickup here, this is, um, a homage, if you like, an unofficial tribute or a knockoff, if you like, of the famous Greeny Moore uh, Sunburst Les Paul, which was, of course, originally owned by Peter Green and then Gary Moore, and, and now I believe resides with Kirk Hammett from Metallica. So, uh, yeah, this is a, a fun, cheap, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll say cheap. Uh, copy of that. £500 is the retail price, but you get them for a lot cheaper than that. I actually paid £329 for this, and certainly the street price for these vintage Les Pauls. Now, let me just clear that up for before we go any further. It's the vintage brand, uh, not a vintage guitar, obviously. Last time I reviewed a... A vintage brand guitar on the channel. Um, I decided for a bit of fun to refer to them as Vantage uh, because I thought it might be less confusing for people. However, at least one person was quite upset that I um, dared to uh, alter a brand name from a highly reputable and respectable manufacturer. So I do apologize. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, I will be calling them vintage guitars. So every time I say vintage guitars in this film, it will be referring to vintage, the brand, and the, you can see it there, the registered trademark. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I just want to mention <laughs> that obviously we, we cover a lot of ground in our reviews. I talk a lot and we look at a lot of stuff. You know, we, we hear the guitars, we talk about how they're made and we and we have a look. We do the deep dive thing, I think they call it. We'll, we look at all the hardware and all the wiring in, in much greater detail. We measure the necks, we measure all the outputs and we have a good old poke around. A lot of people don't want that, you know. They want action. <laughs> this isn't made for the TikTok generation, this. Um, this is made for, you know, more measured sort of pace. Um, and we'll get into it in a little bit more detail. However, if that's not you, timestamps are all in the description box below. So, and, and it's, all, it's all marked out, so you can just leap forward to whatever it is interests you. If you've got a little bit of time, grab a drink, sandwich, some biscuits, and kick back and listen to me bang on for half an hour or so, okay? Right, moving on. Now, I got this in um, shortly after I'd reviewed another of the vintage guitars, which was this one. I've got here, I'll show you. I reviewed the, um, this is a, a homage to Mick Ronson that I reviewed on the channel a while back. Um, Ziggy played guitar, here's the link. Um, check that out. This was, I mean, I was really impressed with that guitar and it, it, 
it opened my eyes to vintage the brand I have a whole range <laughs> i'm gonna every time i say that now i'm gonna laugh um they have a whole range of knockoff guitars as i as i mentioned in 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 that review so they had the mick ronson this is the greeny moore and they've got a joe bonamassa and my experience with vintage the brand is they're good they're really nice guitars they're I think I think it's known that the quality can be variable or has been variable in the past but I think like like everyone in today's uh, market I think they seem to be raising their game this one um, made in Vietnam it's a uh, I think it's a 21 or a 20. I'm not, I can't really decipher the, uh, the serial number, so I don't know what, I don't know what I tried really. I have no idea. Um, it's got a, well, it's got some ones and twos and O's in it, so it could be a 20, could be a 21. 20 or 21. I'm going 21 because I had it, I had it maybe, I had it about six months actually. I just haven't, I haven't got around to reviewing it yet because. Uh, okay, straight away, when I played it, I, you know, guitars arrive, I have a strum, and it was buzzing all over the place really bad. And I thought, oh, my God, this is a disaster. I didn't expect that. So I just kind of put it aside and, 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 and moved on, and done, we'd done loads of other stuff, obviously. But then a couple of weeks ago, I thought, I'll have a quick look at it and see, see what's going on with it. And all it was was just the action was set way too low. So I've, I've, I raised the action uh, and, and it's absolutely fine. Apart from there's one high fret and it's around about there. We'll find, we'll find out later. There's one high fret that I've had to play around. So, um, you know, it, ne it, needed a, it needs a little bit of tweaking. But um, anyway, apart from that, I played it yesterday, done all the playing. It sounds great. I've got to say, it sounds great. Right, here we are, downstairs studio. The rig today, in honour of, or in honour of the Blues Breakers, I suppose, really, because Greeny did play in the Blues Breakers for a while. Um, we're using the Blues Breaker, funnily enough. And uh, these are the settings. And on the pedal board, I, I, I'm sort of starting to swap things around and experiment a little bit more, spend a little bit of time Trying to try out different rigs, really. So today, as you can see, I've got on the the board. First of all, I've had to add the a digital reverb because the, the the amp hasn't got a reverb on it, which is one of the things I find annoying about some Marshalls. Because uh, I, I I just think I think everything needs a little bit of reverb on it. Yeah, so it sounds like this. <laughs> Pretty good start, isn't it? Actually, um, yeah. So totally clean on the amp. That's on the uh, bridge pickup, and on the neck on this. It's really promising. And then, of course, on this, you've got the the pickups flipped, as you can see. So you've got like on the Greeny Moore. You know the story. It's debatable whether or not that that was what gave it the the out of phase sound. What they've done on this guitar is they have given it an out of phase sound, and it's like this. Quite nice. It's quite nice. And then I've added a, a TC Electronic Spark, which just pushes the tubes a little bit more and gives it this lovely, lovely chewiness, as the brilliant Paul Stafford Cook describes that. Yeah, chewiness. I'm I'm nicking that, Paul. If you haven't seen Paul's channel, um, the links below. Check Paul out if you want to see a proper guitarist. Uh, highly recommended. So yeah, chewiness.
And then um, just for a little bit of extra drive, because I can, I suppose, I put an SD1 on there. <laughs> I'm needing that to help with the sustain a little bit. Um, I'm finding the guitar needs that a little bit. I'm not sure if it's the guitar or the rig, but um, it's not ringing like, you know, I'm having to ring it out of it. I'm having to ring the ringing out of it a little bit. going to do now is we're going to have a closer look at how it's made um, you know what it's made from look at the specs and then we'll take it apart and we'll have a look underneath see if we can work out what's going on with this pickup and the wiring inside okay right let's get stuck in it's a mahogany body with maple cap in the long tradition of um of les pauls um so I'd look at the um, the body. I think it looks to me like it's four pieces um, of wood. This um, there's one, two, three, and I think there's a fourth one along the bottom there. Um, so yeah, it's a few pieces, but they haven't covered it in the veneer. You know, they're not not trying to hide anything. And obviously, as you can see, this is this is the distressed one. Um, I mean. It's it's basic sort of stuff, but it, it's it's a fun, cheap guitar. I mean, it's not. It, I suppose it's not purporting to be a Murphy Lab, you know, realistic um, relic job, is it? That you can see on the neck there as well. 
the next mahogany as well, incidentally. Um, let's see if I can see a scarf joint in that. I can't. I can't. I'm going to investigate before I make a, a statement. Okay, so so here's where we're at. Um, I can't see a scarf joint at all, and I can't see a heel joint at all. So unless they are very well hidden, disguised, um, it's a single piece neck. Yeah, it looks like it. It doesn't say in the specs. It doesn't actually make a, any point of that at all. Um, but as far as I, I'm going to do some close-ups of this, obviously, so you can you can also take a view on that. But as far as I can tell, I am going to declare that it's a one-piece net. There you go. So, well, that's for me. It's a revelation because I didn't expect that at all because. Obviously, having a one-piece neck is something that Epiphone, in particular, have recently made a big deal of with their um, 61 SG and the 59 Les Paul. And it's a good thing. Well, depending on who you believe. But yeah, this looks like it's a one-piece neck. I can also tell you, it's also got a rosewood fingerboard on this. Full-on rosewood fingerboard. 12-inch radius. It's a graphite nut. Looks very well cut. Very slick, no, no fear of your strings sticking in that, which is, as you know, what causes nine out of 10 tuning problems. Medium jumbo frets. We'll have a closer look at that um, later, but um, initial, initial reaction is there's no, sh there's no sharpage there at all. We'll have, a, we'll have a close up look, but they seem to be pretty well finished there is one high fret which we'll look at later but apart from that there doesn't seem to be any problem with these so that's cool um maple flame veneer so it's got um you know a, a wafer thin <laughs> maple flame on the top there which it's not bad y you know it, it's an interesting flame i'll just tell you what i will do i'll just Put that alongside something else that you'll recognise. This is um, Lazarus. Here's Lazarus. Here's Johnny. Just give you a, an idea of how good, I suppose, the, um, the, the vintage, I nearly said Vantage, the vintage brand is um, compared to, you know, this Lazarus that they... You know, they, they make sort of enthusiastic claims about the, you know, the maple veneer on this. Whereas vintage don't even mention it, actually, thinking about it. So I like it. You know, it's, it's kind of a nice, it's a, it's a nice thing. The body shape is obviously because it's an unlicensed um, knockoff. They, you know, they've subtly made the, made the pointy horn and they've got a contour um, on, on the neck that you can see there. And they, and they, they say this is, um, referring to my notes again, uh, vintage V100 features a unique evolutionary body shape with a graceful descending base side shoulder and an ingeniously designed offset heel providing improved access to the upper reaches of the fretboard. There you go. And you thought they were just trying to avoid being sued. And then the tuners, um, what we've got here is we've got um, Wilkinson uh, diecast tuners, they call them, they call them um, Wilkinson Deluxe WJ01 chrome tuners. And their copies, Tre Trev Wilkinson designs, um, you know all the hardware on this and it's it's copy of of other stuff these these look like a copy of the the diecast tuners that um 
I criticised just last week, actually, because they were on the Epiphone Olympic special Joan Jet, and, and I criticised that for, for having these because I thought it would be better off with uh, the Cluson Deluxe or um, the Grovers, you know, even, because um, these have got a kind of a, a cheap look to them. And I suppose just because these are, these are Wilkinson's versions of that, I say the same, to be honest with you. What is great fun here is that they, they take the distress into the level where, where they, they um, drill um, holes for the supposed original tuners. Because, of course, what happened with a lot of these old Les Pauls is they had the, the vintage Cluson-style tuners and lots of people replaced them for Grovers, which left those holes. Um, so what would have probably been better is if they'd have put Grovers on, on this rather than from that. Um, and I know they can because actually I showed you the, uh, the Rono one obviously had, had Grover tuners on it, has Grover tuners on it. So it could have done that, although I think that was 50 quid more expensive, so... Maybe it was just a cost cost decision. They wanted to keep the cost of this down. Maybe they did it so that you could actually, you know, get get in get into the spirit of things and change them yourself and drill some more holes. Maybe who knows? But um, so that's that. The headstock is you know is what it is. It's a it's a, a vintage brand headstock. Not my favourite, I must say, but. It, it, it is what it is, really. Now, just before we go any further, I will say I said it's made of mahogany. And I'm now recently um, trying to be educated about this this whole timber debate, you know, mahogany versus mahogany, um, Asian mahogany versus uh, American mahogany. Um, and I, I'm led to believe that it, the distinction really should be made as to Honduran mahogany is, is, is American, what American guitars are made from most of the time. And uh, Philippine mahogany is what uh, Asian guitars are made from. And there is a distinction. They are different. OK, now, I, 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 that's all I can say at the moment. I know this because um, we've, we've, we've recently launched a forum on our subscription channel and we have a member who's far more knowledgeable about this stuff than I am, and probably a lot of you are, um, but maybe not all of you. So if you'd like to um, join in that debate, uh, check out our subscription channel and, and look at the forum and, and come, We're, we've opened up this massive Tonewood rabbit hole, um, and, and it's gonna be a perilous journey, but um, I hopefully at some point uh, will we'll emerge uh, blinky-eyed, uh, educated into all, all what is Tonewood. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, or you may never see me again. But anyway, um, if, if that sounds like your thing, uh, check out the uh, subscription channel. Links in the description box. Uh, you get 30 days free. And then if you want to stick around uh, and, and join the party, you can. And there's going to be extra content up there as well. So this guitar is most likely made from Philippine mahogany, which is different to Honduran mahogany that they make most American guitars out of. So if you want to find out more, join us in that rabbit hole. Um, so let's, um, anyway, so it's not, there's no weight relief on this, but it feels, quite, it feels quite a nice weight. So let's weigh it and find out what that weight is. Here we go. So what, seven pounds, seven ounces? Or 3.40 kilograms. There you go. Nice lightweight. The neck, we'll measure the neck properly and I'll show you, I'll show you the profile and the measurements of that. It's quite shallow. Okay, so here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. Now, it, it feels quite shallow, as you can see. It's a ni it's nice C-shape, a nice rounded C-shape, but it does feel quite, quite shallow in the hand. Okay, so let's uh, take it apart and um, 
get the strings off. Okay, so the hardware, the hardware on on all vintage guitars is it's designed by Trevor Wilkinson, um, who's a, you know he's well known and well respected, and makes some good retrofit parts for guitars. <laughs> Strangely enough. Um, so let's have a look. I mean, obviously it's based on, you know, it's based on the tunematic style. This is the um, the tailpiece. Let's, let's weigh that. 72 grams. And I happen to have here an Epiphone one. Because uh, I wanted to compare that. That weighs 62, 69 grams, sorry. So they're, you know, pretty much the same. Let's see if the Epiphone one will fit straight on. There you go. Look at that. So should you wanna should you wanna swap things around with Gibson style ones, really, you, you can straight away. In fact, here's the lightweight Faber one that we've been mucking around with recently. And that'll go straight on as well. I mean, you might want to change the posts as well, but that fits. The posts will fit as well. So that's that's good news because if you want to, if you want to upgrade your vintage. Now, what about the bridge? Don't want to come off. Just need a little bit of help. Um. Okay. KD, it says on the back of that. Fifty-seven grams. Again, here's an Epiphone one. This is about ten grams less than the Epiphone one. Let's see if that will go straight on. And again, yeah, it does. So it's just a straight forward. Swap, so yeah, you can you can change the hardware with Gibson style stuff and and all the reproduction furniture. Yeah, let's call it furniture and all the reproduction furniture that's available for these guitars. So that's cool. Pop that back on. I'll leave that there for a minute. Cool. Bridge pickup, just over eight kilo ohms. And the neck, 6.78. In between, 3.67. Now, I realise these, the readings don't mean an awful lot in isolation. But to me, they suggest that these are quite nice vintage voiced pickups, as, as, as I hope they would be, really. We'll find out when we hear it. OK, so let's... Uh, Let's pop them out and uh, have a look underneath. See what's going on. Looking forward to seeing, I think it says in the specs that this is rewired um, out of phase. Um, I don't think just flipping your pickup gives you the out of phase sound. Um, we'll try and dig a little bit deeper into that as we progress, but let's, um, let's have a look. Right, let's have a let's have a look under these things. So as you can see, that's really tidy, and it's got a long neck tenon. So not only has it got a apparently a one piece neck, it's also got a long neck tenon as well. It's impressive. You can see the. Um, you can see the thick maple cap on that as well. And you can see the, the back of the pickup there. It looks like it's had a sticker on there that's been taken off. But all, all you can see on there now is the, the Wilkinson brand stamp. OK, nothing else. Same, super neat work, super neat. 
really tidy. And the same on the back of the pickup, just the Wilkinson brand stamp. Screw these back and then we'll have a we'll have a look in the control cab. Now, I'm, I'm obviously, I don't know if you noticed that it's got no pick guard on it. It's got the holes drilled in it, um, but they've, they've purposely left that off. So uh, I think it's quite a nice touch. No, you could, it's, a lot, it's a lot going on in there. It's, it, it's quite messy. It's got these mini little pots in there and um, big blobs of solder. It's got like, it's got, <laughs> they look what I'd describe as bin ties holding the wire together. That's interesting. It's very Vietnamese, isn't it? Okay. Um, well, yeah, there you go. It's, um, there's definitely some manual labour going on in there, isn't there? And on the, um, and the control switch, the pickup selector is, I think that's what they call a, 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 a circuit board type. But this stuff aside, you've probably heard some stuff by now, and, and I can tell you it, it sounds great, so I'm not going to knock this. It functions. It's functional. Now, one thing that always leaps out at these vintage brand guitars are the, the trash rod covers. Um, it's a, like, it's just, it looks so crappy. It's just like, it's got one screw holding it on. <laughs> it's good for <laughs> quick access, I suppose. Oops. It's just kind of like, it says lemon drop on there. Um, let's have a look in there. Well, you know, it's tidy. In keeping with the, uh, you know, the, the routing under the pickups and stuff, it's a nice little tidy job. It's a nice little Allen key type truss rod. But if there's any part of the design that they could so easily improve, it's the truss rod cover. Because it, it just, you're putting it back on, it just kind of... It's rubbish. I was talking about the frets earlier. Again, yeah, they, they, they're, they're nice. But as you can see, where they frets have been filed they've left rough file marks and dirt all the way up and down uh, both sides of the fingerboard I mean this is a distressed or relict guitar anyway so you can pretty much get away with anything I suppose but you can see the you know you can see the hand it's kind of rolled actually yeah it's kind of got a rolled edge on it <laughs>
there you go. We're back. Nice, fresh new set of strings. And I've just noticed that I've managed to put the bridge on uh, the wrong way around. It's got screws on one side and nuts on the other. And I've put it on arse about face. So I'm going to have to loosen the strings and flip that around. But I shall, I shall do that in a bit when, when you've gone home. Um, for now, what do we think? Well, I'll be honest with you. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with this guitar. I like it a lot. And it's better than I thought it was going to be. When it arrived, as I said, it, it was all rattly and buzzy. So I kind of put it to one side because I thought it was going to be a bit rubbish. Um, and, and it's only, you know, I've discovered that it just needed the action adjusting to stop the buzzing. Um, and it actually plays great. Um, it, it's great. There's, as I said, there's a, there's a high fret on the, the 13th fret, which um, does cause a little bit of, you know, I'll show you what it does. This is what a high fret does. And you bend. It's that one, it's the 13th. So that needs uh, a bit of flattening down, reshaping or whatever it is. But I'll have a go at that myself because it's only a, a cheapish guitar, isn't it? So um, yeah, it'd be good. be a good little project to try and learn on rather than I wouldn't send it off to a luthier myself. I'd learn how to do it myself. There's loads of films on YouTube that, that, that show you how to do that stuff. So um, yeah, I'll have a go at that. Um, specs wise, this guitar has got some great stuff going on if you know we, we spoke about the neck it looks like it's a one piece neck and then until i find out otherwise that's what i'm going to claim <laughs> it's got a rosewood fingerboard you know some of you guys out there are going to be very impressed with that um the wiring and stuff the, the pickups sound great the the, the controls all work what I really like about this sound is that it's got this out of phase, you know, thing that they've they've done for the middle position, and it works. Unlike most um, out of phase sounds you get on guitars, they're too thin; they don't really work. Out of phase, you know, the whole the whole nature of that is one signal cancels out the other, I, I believe. Um, but but they've managed to engineer this so, so that it actually sounds good as well, as well as being out of phase. It's not a gimmick on this um what they've done is they've tried to recreate a good sound from this greeny more knockoff and they've succeeded and the neck pickup on its own sounds great as well so you know full marks for all of that although it's got these tiny little pots inside and and lots of a, a bird's nest of scrappy wiring is is a way i would describe it um <laughs> held together with some I said bin bin bag ties, isn't it? it, it not bin bag ties. What are those? What other things? It's like sandwich bag ties or something in there. So it's like someone had their packed lunch and then decided to use their the ties to to to, to keep the cables tidy. But anyway, look, you know, it all works. That's all under the hood. Um, it's neat as you like, you know, in the routing and stuff, as you saw. So the thing I don't like about it is the neck. The, or the the thing I like least about it, shall I say, is the neck. It's it's a it's a C, but it's quite shallow. And and I noticed straight away when I was barring chords on it that it doesn't support the back of your thumb because it's quite narrow. And it so if you're doing a lot of bar chord work, it it kind of aches a little bit. I expect you get used to it and adjust to it. But if you like a chunky neck. You know, you might want to you might want to try one of these out before you go ahead and buy one. That's the vintage V100 MR Lemon Drop, the distressed one. They also do this in a gloss without the distressing, actually, uh, which looks pretty cool. And and as I said earlier, they do other variations of this. They they do or did a, a Bonamassa um, knockoff. And uh, one of his Les Pauls, they do gold tops, they do custom stuff. They do, there's a huge range of guitars coming out of the, the, the vintage um, factories. I say factories, catalogue, whatever. Um, you know, Les Paul specials. We did, a, we, we had a, the, the one that I called Vantage, that was a, a Les Paul double cut, which we had in the um, P 
Junior shootout. Here you go. Here's a link. Check that out. Um, that was one of their guitars. And um, I think we'll, we'll 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 keep this on around for a little while, and we'll we'll try and compare it to some of its peers, Holly Benton for sure, and um, some others. I'm pleased that this is stacked up because I was worried it wasn't going to, and I, I you know. I know vintage you've got such a good reputation that I didn't want to <laughs> I didn't want to pour any cold water on that as it were. So I'm glad I haven't. Uh, no no cold water's been poured. They've impressed. Well done guys. Um nice guitar. And uh on that note we'll say thank you very much for watching if you're still here of course or or even if you skipped through, you know, you might have you know, you might have been watching for two minutes and then skip to the summary to see what I think. So oh, well, either way, I'd, I'm, I'm just pleased that you're watching any of it, really. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll be back next week with something else. Don't know what yet. Why don't you join me and find out? OK, cheers for now. Ta-ra. Bye.